Hey everyone, and welcome back. You are a bit more zoomed in than you're used to, and that's because today we're looking at something very small. It's by a Miniware, it's the DS213. This was provided uh, to me for review from Banggood.com. Didn't pay a thing, money didn't change hands, but I still get to say whatever the hell I want. This is a neat little uh, oscilloscope, uh, 15 megahertz bandwidth, um, 100 meg samples per second, so a little bit on the low side for the samples per second, uh, but 15 megs uh, for hobbyist use is quite good until you get you know more experienced. Uh, two analog and two digital channels. It's a two-channel scope with uh, you know a two-channel logic probe, I guess, on on it, and has a signal gen built in. A little bit limited, but still signal gen. So let's go take a look at what's in the box. And in the box is the unit itself. Very small unit. Hey, you can see which ones of my lights are out. Yeah, I have to repair these pretty soon. But anyways, tiny little unit. I mean, and we're talking tiny. It is just about uh, 10 centimeters by, oh, almost 6 centimeters. So very small unit, but the construction is aluminum. Look at how fancy. See the, the bolts here? So this thing is not a low quality unit, it's a high quality unit, but it might be a little bit limited depending on what you do. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to do with it, but you get some manuals, you get a um, USB cord, this is a USB micro, uh, so that's what it uses, it has an internal battery in, in this size as well, um, and you just charge it with this, and you have probes. So I'm going to take them out because I'm going to use them at some point. And I want to point out at this point, oh boy, this is tight. I do want to point out at this point the one thing that I would say you have to be really careful about when you buy this, if you buy this, link in the description, is that it does not use standard BNCs. It uses these MCX connectors. I mean, it makes sense because a BNC would be way too big to fit on the side of here, but that is a downside. Now, in the description, I'll have a link to these. This is a BNC on one end and an MCX on the other. So you can plug that in and actually use your normal oscilloscope accessories on this device. It is an extra cost, but if all you're gonna be needing is the probes, then you don't have to worry about it. If, if you're just gonna be using the probes, don't worry about it. Or accessories for probes, you don't have to worry about it. Me on the other hand, I think this thing has fantastic potential in the automotive world and for that we need accessories. So first things first, going to peel the peel. There we go. That is done. Now it is no longer fresh. Little on off switch on the side here, then you got channel C and D on this side and A and B and an output on the other. And you'll see I've set the brightness to max and actually the brightness is quite acceptable for this thing. Now something you have to keep in mind, navigation is a bit difficult. So you've got A and B. So your B, you have to turn until the feature you want is highlighted. So let's say I want to, my first channel, so here, and I want it to be DC coupled. I have to move the B until it's flashing and then I move the A until it's what I want. So this is times 10, AC times 10, uh, off, DC, AC. DC times 10, AC times 10, off, right? So I'm gonna put it in DC times 10, and then I'm going to uh, move the B, and I'm going to turn off the other channel. I'm gonna go to channel C, turn that one off, D, turn it off, okay? And there, that's the our baseline, so we've got our our, our channel A, first channel, in blue, running, but it's not reading anything at all. So let me see if we can uh, get it to actually read something here. So I'm going to plug in one of the channels to channel A. Oops, I accidentally pressed hold from one of these buttons up here. Okay, and I'll plug in the other probe into the out, and we'll see if we get a nice clean signal from the signal gen. So to the out, and then basically plug the two channels together, like so. Okay, 
And now we can go over here with the B, we can change the square wave or whatever, but let's adjust here, change our DC voltage, there we go, so 0 0.5, let's go over to our trigger, that's the V trigger, and we're going to turn A, you should see that trigger line, see there it's going down, now it's going up, bang, so now we've got our signal triggered. We can offset the position, I think it's Y position over here. Okay, Y position, we can move it down a bit. There is a bit of a voltage offset there I can see. I'm going to try to center the uh, wave pattern as good as we can. Move the voltage trigger. There we go, and then go on to the DC volts per division. There we go. And I want to recenter that wave. There we go. So it is a bit more finicky than playing with knobs on, like, let's say, the Rigel, but it does do the job. It's really not too bad once you get used to it, it's just not efficient. The only reason you would buy one of these is because you want the small form factor battery operated oscilloscope. And I honestly think the automotive world is the perfect place for this thing because it's not that expensive, it's about 200 bucks. You chuck it into your toolbox and I mean, it just works. So let me hook this up to my function generator and we'll put it through its paces a little bit. All right, I've got my uh, Unity UTG 962E function generator hooked up to the MCX to BNC connector here. Uh, I think that function gen wins the uh, award for having the least pronounceable name. Um, but this is at the very tippy top of this thing's limitation. So I am feeding it a 15 megahertz signal, five volts peak to peak. And as you can see, I mean, it is displaying it well. The only thing is there's quite a bit of uh, loss in the signal because uh, you see it's three volts peak to peak here. So it, it is, it's supposed to be five volts peak to peak so we lost a volt on each side. Let's see if I turn it down though. There's a five megahertz uh, signal and the volts peak to peak has definitely changed. So let's move this over here to the DC and we'll give one volt, there we go, now it's five volts peak to peak. So there is a little bit of attenuation of the signal up at the upper range, and actually that is, um, there's a spec for that on oscilloscopes, and I don't remember what it is, but I mean a five megahertz signal, especially for hobby electronics, that's really not bad, although I will say a sine wave is probably the easiest for this thing to capture. Let's change the wave type to a square wave now, same thing, five megahertz. And we're getting really rounded corners. Now, I have taken a look at this and it does seem as though the rounded corners might be coming from the function gen itself. It's very, very difficult to make clean corners on um, a square wave. So I'm just going to drop it here down to uh, one megahertz and you can see it's a lot nicer now. And we can change the time base here. There we go. Quite a bit nicer. It, it is seems it does seem to be working so that's pretty nice let's change it again this is a 100 k hertz um, uh, uh, triangle wave and there we go picking it up quite well as well this thing does have a stop function as well so you can pause it and you can actually uh, read the waveform and resume it pretty neat this seems to be working uh, pretty well on the function gen. So um, let's see if we can put it in some real world circuits and watch it work. So here I have a board uh, from a, a big time handsome YouTuber. Uh, maybe you've heard of him, Gadget Reboot. Um, it's a triple five timer sort of signal gen type thing. And I added this little ground wire so I can hook up um, scope leads to it a lot easier. But if we hook this up here, and I don't know what frequency this is at, so this is kind of like a nice real-time test. So first and foremost, I need to change this into um, DC times 10. So here it is, DC 10. And then I'm going to move this. Uh, it's probably, it's only getting fed 5 volts, so it's probably not going to be, you know, 10 volts 
Uh, okay, and then we got to change the time base. So we're going to go over here. Can you do auto? Normal? Oh, that's the trigger mode. All right, and I'm going to move this up. Micro, nano, nano, uh oh. Milliseconds, there we go. 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds. Oh, here we go. I think we're getting it now. There we go. So now we're getting it. And our frequency, I'm, I'm sure if you go down this way, um, frequency. Oh no, the frequency is too, it's too slow. <laughs> we can't do it. Okay, let's fiddle with these pots and see if we can affect the frequency a bit here. I think one of these pots is on time and the other one is off time. Maybe we'll set this to scroll. Let's see here. Fairly certain uh, you do it like, there we go, slow mode. There we go. So now we can see the signal in real time. We'll see how we're able to affect it. That's wheeled all the way in. It doesn't help that I don't actually remember how to set this up, but as you can see, even slow moving uh, signals is just fine. So D percent and yeah, well, there we go. So it is reading it quite perfectly. And you know, it being a 15 megahertz scope, it's overkill for this because I can see like the on time is, you know, it's ridiculously long. It's like a couple seconds on. So that's pretty good. He sent me actually all the documentation on this. It's actually quite a nice board. I just, uh, you know, haven't looked up the instructions before setting this all up. Oh, look at our off time. Our off time is shrinking. Let's try to shrink our on time. There we go. Here we go. Oh look, the off time is tiny now. All right, let's see if we can grab the uh, the off pulses here. And yeah, we're grabbing them. There they are. There we go. Um, and now if you want to really catch them, you can put them into single shot mode. Bang, right there. Pretty neat. And then you can go down here and grab the um, math functions. Uh, voltage max, voltage minimum, RMS, the average, uh, delta V, and delta T, I believe, 20 milliseconds, that is from one end to the other. And I think we can change the uh, measurements here. If we go over, oops. Okay, so there's T1, and we'll move T1. Oop. I don't actually see. So put T1 there, move T2. See the little triangles down there? So we got like a 10 millisecond off time here. So that's what that tells you and the delta the delta V, you can move the uh, voltage measurements there too. Pretty neat. So yeah, I think that's it for my quick first look here. 
I think this thing is perfectly capable if you need the small form factor and are able to overlook the two downsides that I see as uh, big downsides. Uh, one is the controls being a bit finicky along the top here. You can uh, save and record uh, uh, way, uh, waveforms and stuff like that, which is pretty neat. But you have to deal with this kind of A-B dial thing. There's no... I can't even think of a better way to do it. It's just that in this form factor, because this thing is so small, I mean, this is like much smaller than a smartphone even, that's just part and parcel with it. And the other thing that this small form factor does that I don't like is these little MCX connectors on the side. I would rather full-size BNCs. It's just not possible when the BNC is like the total width of the device. So I get why they did that. If you need a small portable scope, this here is very capable. It's a very good option. And, you know, the tough aluminum case, the fact that it has a, a fairly large battery in it, it's a pretty good option. But if you need something portable, um, but you need full-size BNC, uh, you know, you have to carry these around. Um, maybe you just, you need to be faster with the dials. Maybe that's not for you. But if it is for you, then just head on down to the description and you'll see the affiliate link for where you can get your own one of these. I definitely recommend it if you need a tiny pocket oscilloscope. For a decent price, this thing will cost you less than uh, a snap-on uh, multimeter if you're in the automotive industry. So I would say I'd rather get this than a snap-on multimeter. So make sure you let me know in the comments below what kind of tests you want me to do to this thing for the full review. This is not a full review. I don't have enough um, uh, seat time with this yet to do a full review, but you let me know what you want that full review to include. Thanks for watching.